We are here today with Surah Ar Rahman, one of the uh, most beautiful, most eloquent, most poetic surahs of the Quran. Anyone who, re who reads it understands the amazing poetry that is behind it. And a scholar of the Arabic language is mesmerized by, by the quality of the uh, of the surah in terms of its linguistic excellence and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautified every single statement of his by asking the same question again and again by which of the powers or the blessings or the qualities of your Lord will you deny this surah was revealed according to the scholars of Islam in Mecca. There are some differences of the scholars on this point. Some said it was in Medina, but vast majority are of the opinion that it was in Mecca. And this was because it was authentically reported that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was coming back from Ta'if, he went to Ta'if thinking that people in Ta'if might accept it. He walked out of Ta'if with his feet bleeding. When he rested under the tree, it was noted that he recited some verses of the Quran. It was noted that he recited Surah Ar-Rahman. When he recited Surah Rahman, it was narrated that the jinn all gathered together. And when the jinn all gathered together, some of them were crouching on top of each other so much so it was narrated that they were about to crush down on Rasulullah because of the number of the jinns on top of each other trying to hear Rasulullah So it was, it was narrated that Rasulullah said that, that when the jinn heard the words of Allah Azawajal, Fabi ayi ala yurabbikuma tukadiban. Then they started to say, no, O oh Allah, with none of your blessing are we going to ever deny. So we find that therefore the jinn replied. In one authentic narration in Mustad Imam Ahmed, it was reported that Rasulullah recited this verse and the Sahaba kept quiet. So Rasulullah said to them, what is wrong with you? That you do not give an answer better than the answer of the jinn. Because when I recited this surah to the jinn, they all said, they repeated one after the other. None of the ayat of Allah, none of your blessings of Allah are we going to deny. Meaning that when you are reciting the surah in your non-obligatory prayers, answer the, the question of Allah. What does Allah say? Which of my blessings will you deny? And you reply back, Oh Allah, none of your blessings are we ever going to deny. From this hadith we understand that Rasulullah would stop at every single time. He said, Fabi he would stop and he would say, Oh Allah, none of your blessings are we going to deny. So now that we know that this surah was revealed early on in Makkah, before the Hijrah, so now we can appreciate that this was revealed at a time when the Quraysh had sovereignty and had power and authority and they had control over Makkah and they thought that they were leaders and lords. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah to them in order to put them in their place. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah Ar Rahman, the one who is most merciful to everything. Mankind and jinn, Muslim and non Muslim, the animate and the inanimate, the ones who have life, the ones who have death, all of them. The one who is generally merciful to everything, he is Ar Rahman. Ar Rahim, he is the one who is specifically merciful to the believers. Because he has now not only had mercy to everything, but he has actually specified and focused all his mercy, especially for the believers, and this is Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman. He is the one who has Rahma on every single thing, and so he has filled the surah by describing and explaining the name and the meaning of Ar-Rahman, who has mercy on every single being in creation, in existence and not in existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is so much that, that it in, even engulfs the existence of evil on this earth. He has created evil so that when we sin, we discover a different world or ibadah which would not be open had we not sinned or had there no, not been shaitan. Imagine a world where everyone is good. Imagine a world where there is no evil, no harm, no punishment, no difficulty, no disease. In that time, do you think people will have something called patience? Will people have something called repentance? Will people have something called hope? Will people have something called dua? And that is why he is a Rahman, the one who has blessed this world with complete mercy and even the existence of evil is from his mercy. 
عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ So the first example of his mercy, or as the scholars say, the greatest example of the mercy of Allah above every single thing is what? Is the Qur'an, is that he has taught us the Qur'an, is that Allah has spoken to his creation and guiding the creation to what they should do in this dunya and the akhirah. Allah al-Qur'an, he taught him the Qur'an. Khalaq al-insan, the second blessing of Allah is that he created mankind. And the third blessing is Allah al-bayan, is that he taught him to communicate and speak. So that insan does not become like trees that do not communicate, or like wood or plants. The scholars of Islam said bayan means two things. One, it can mean that Allah has taught them how to communicate and speak, so He's given them the mouth and the words and the sound, etc. The second being Allah has given them languages, knowledge of languages. So therefore, to know multiple languages also from the blessings of Allah Azawajal. Ashamsu wal qamaru bi husban, meaning the sun and the moon bi husban in the appointed cosmological trajectories. So Allah Azawajal mentions that these two are also from the general blessings of Allah. Shams that provides light and life to this dunya and Qamar that reflects the light and provides a guide for those people in order to know our dates and in order to know our path. Bi husban, they follow their appointed trajectories. Wan najmu wa shajaru yasjudan. This does not mean stars. Naj, plants that do not have a stock. Uh, for example, lettuce. It just grows on the from the ground. One najmu wa shajaru and the and the trees. So trees are plants that have stalks. They have a stalk. They have a trunk upon which then the branches come out and then you have leaves. But the naj are those plants that do not have any stalk at all. One najmu wa shajaru yasjudan and the these plants and the trees all prostrate to him. The thunder when it strikes praises Allah. Even the birds with the wings outstretched, every single thing knows how to praise Allah. Meaning the heavens, He has raised it up high into the sky and He's made that as a protection from the shams. And He has put therein the mizan, which is adl and justice on this earth. Some of the scholars said mizan over here means three things. The first meaning is justice in this dunya. The second meaning of mizan is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Quran because the Quran is the mizan by which we weigh everything. The third mizan meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that there be justice in our business dealings is because of this verse, verse number eight, that you should not over encroach upon the mizan, meaning do not shortchange each other. When you are weighing each other and you're selling things, do not shortchange each other, give some of them less and some of them more. Allah tatagaw fil mizan. Do not over arc against the mizan. And establish the wazan bil qist with justice. Wala tukhsirul mizan and do not be do not be deficient in the weight that you're giving each other. Remember, brothers and sisters that this is the mode and modality by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the people of Shu'aib. The people of Shu'aib were business people and they were a people who used to cheat each other in the ways that they used to give each other. And the earth, he has spread out all sorts of walking beasts, walking beasts including human beings and including animals and all types of cattle. Fiha inside this earth is fakihatun, is fruits wa nakhlu and date palms thatul akmam, meaning date palms that have a covering, meaning that not only has he created this earth and in it he has put fruit trees, but he has covered up the fruit by coverings. So each date has a has a ghilaf, has a cover on top of it, and that is the akmam. In the same way, Allah says in the next verse, look what he says, wal habbu and every type of seed that we eat. For example, uh, rice, wheat, barley, corn. These are the hab, dhul asf, that has a covering, meaning not only is the existence of the hab, of the grain a blessing, but the covering of the grain is a blessing from Allah. Wal and every type of beautiful smell. 
فبي اي الاء ربكما تكذبان so which of the ala meaning ala has three meanings rabbikuma of your lord tukadhiban will you both deny so what does ala mean ala means three things number one ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said ala is a plural plural of al which is blessings the second meaning of al is power which of the power of your lord will you deny meaning which of the abilities of your lord will you deny Will you deny his ability to give you this? Will you deny his ability to create you? The third meaning of Al are the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the three meanings of Allah. So when you're reciting this verse, don't just think of power. Don't just think of blessings. Don't just think of quality. Think of all the three things at the same time. None of them are we going to deny, Ya Rab. خلق insan. So he has created mankind. Min salsalin is baked clay. Fakhar, which is the rotten, burnt clay. Meaning that it has been burnt and hardened so much that it's become like this burnt, hard, baked clay. This is the Fakhar. But he also says in the Quran, he created mankind from Turab. And he also says he created mankind from Teen. And he also says he created mankind from Hama in Masnoon, which is clay or sand or soil that has water in it. So it's dirt. Sometimes Allah mentions He created us from, from semen, which is watery, that's the blood. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions clay. So this is the muscle. And salsal in kal fakhar, which is the hardened baked clay, which is the bones. Wa khalaqal janna. So He has created jinn, min mari jinn min nar, that comes out or that is attached to what comes out. So it's the flame on top of the fire. So you've got the fire. On top of the fire is this smokeless flame. You know, it's almost invisible. So from a smokeless fire, he has created jinn. Which of the powers or blessings or qualities of your Lord will you deny? He is your Lord, meaning you're meant to worship him. He is the Lord of the East and the Lord of the West. So which of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you deny? Maraj al yaltaqiyan. Maraj, meaning he has allowed the flowing of the Bahrain, of the oceans, yaltaqiyan, allowed them to meet. What is amazing is the next verse. Bainahuma barzakhun la yabghiyan. Between them are barzakh that they never ever encroach upon. So the scholar said, Either it is the salt water and the sweet water that has a meeting point in which none of them encroach on each other. Wallahi, it's amazing. This is the Maraj al Bahrain. Uh, in South Africa, you can actually see the Maraj al Bahrain, the two places where the, the seas meet and they do not encroach upon each other. And the Sahaba never understood this, but they never witnessed it for their eyes, and we can see it now. Which are the blessings, which are the powers of your Lord, will you deny? From this, we not only give you food, but we give you precious items. Lu'lu is pearls. Now, why does Allah mention pearls? In fact, we find in history that pearls are the most expensive of all things, not diamonds. Diamonds is a modern invention. In fact, the Roman generals used to wage wars with one single pearl. Marjad is rubies, red rubies. So which of your blessings or power or favors of your Lord will you deny? And for him are the jawar. So he has multiple ships that is munsha'at, that is high rising on top of each other. Fil bahar, in the, in the oceans, kal a'lam, like mountains. So big ships that have huge towering stocks on which are, you know, the sails that you put or you have carried so much things on top of the ship that becomes high like mountains. From his blessings is that he has allowed something which normally would sink in the water to now rise up high above the water and carry itself. This is from his blessings. Now warns everyone that all of this will be destroyed. All of this mercy and blessing will be destroyed because you will have to go back to Ar Rahman who has created you and he will judge you. So the earth will be destroyed. The angels will, will, will all be destroyed. 
Jannah and Jahannam that exists right now will be destroyed. The Hurul Ain will be destroyed. The servants in Jannah will be destroyed. Jibreel will be destroyed. Mikail destroyed. Every single thing will be destroyed. Wa and nothing will remain except Wajhu Rabbika Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. This verse is very important. So Waj means face. Rabbika means your Lord. Dhu means possessor of the one who possesses Jalal meaning majesty wal ikram and nobility it must be a real face allah has a face this is why when you read the 70 plus ahadith of rasulullah that we will be able to see the face of ar rahman on the day of judgment it's a real face fabi ayyi ala rabbikuma tukadiban yasaluhu man fis samawati wal ardi every single thing in the heavens and the earth ask him for whatever they need kulla yawmin huwa fi isha'an Every single day, he is busy doing his affairs. What are the affairs? What are the actions Allah does? So every day, Allah is giving life to someone or giving death to someone. He is forgiving somebody or punishing somebody. He is either curing someone or he's giving disease to someone, right? He is either making someone rich or making someone poor. So every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is doing his commands. So which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Now look at this verse. This verse that puts fear in the heart of any believer. سَنَفْرُغُ لَكُمْ أَيُّهَا الثَّقَلَانِ Meaning, yes, this is what I'm doing every day. But a day will come when I will leave this. Meaning, I will not be curing someone and uh, fixing someone. Forgiving someone and, and punishing someone. No, no. A day will come when I leave all of this. And I will only busy myself with the two of you. O oh, jinn and mankind. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Ya ma'ashar al jinni wal insi. O oh, the groups of jinn and ins. In istata'atum, if you are able to, antan fudu min aqtar is samawat, to run away by going through the aqtar. Aqtar meaning the sides of the samawati wal ard. Fan fudu, then hide. Then, then, then hide from me. Meaning, don't you ever think you can escape my command. Don't think you can run away from this heavens and the earth and escape somewhere in the universe that I cannot get you. So if you're able to even come out from the sides of the heavens and the earth, you will not be able to reach the heavens or, or seek it except by a sultan, a permission from Allah. فَبِي أَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? يُرْسَلُوا عَلَيْكُمَا شُوَاب If you try to ascend the heavens and run away from me, يُرْسَلُوا It will be sent upon you. شُوَاب is flames without smoke, like the shooting stars. Because these are actually meteors that are sent down from the sky, raining down from the sky upon the jinns that try to reach up to the heavens. وَنُحَاسِ And iron, meaning these Asteroids are not just fire, they're actually heavy, molten metal, different types of metals. Fala tantasiran, and you will never ever be helped by anyone other than me. Fabi ayi ala irabbi kuma tu kadiban. Fa idan shakkati samas on that day of judgment, when the sky has been torn up. So the angels going in and out will tear up the sky. Fakanat, so it is like warda. Warda is rose, meaning red like rose. So the sky is torn up and it's red in color. Kaddihan, like red leather. Fabi ayyi ala irabbikuma tukadiban. Which of the powers of your Lord will you deny? Fayawma idin la yusalu an dhambihi insu wala jan. On that day, no one will be asked about. Dhambihi, his sins, you already know about the sins that he has done. Insun wala jan, fabi ayyi ala irabbikuma tukadiban. Yu'raful mujrimuna bi simahum. On that day, the mujrimun, the wrongdoers, will be known by the signs of their faces. The scholars of Islam said, the mujrimun will come out with black faces and blue eyes. Yu'raful mujrimun, on that day, the sinners will be known by bi simahum, by their signs. فَيُؤْخَذُوا بِالنَّوَاصِي وَالْأَقْدَامِ Look at the power of this verse. Allah says, so they will be grabbed by their foreheads and by their legs. The scholars mention that they will be tied. 
which of the powers of your Lord will you deny? This is the Jahannam that you Mujrimun, you don't believe in. يَطُوفُونَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ حَمِيمٍ آن They'll be walking around, يَطُوفُونَ doing tawaf in the fire is because they're chased by wild animals in the Jahannam. So they're doing tawaf, almost running around in circles, being chased by these wild beasts. يَطُوفُونَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ حَمِيمٍ آن And then running to the water. Absolutely, positively, the most hot it can be in order to try to hide from these wild beasts. Which of the powers of your Lord will you deny? And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but now it's mercy. Now look, mercy is for the one who fears Allah. And he who fears the maqam, I'm going to come back to this meaning of maqam. He who fears the maqam of his Lord, of his Rabb, for him is two jannas. What does maqam mean? The scholars of Islam said maqam means three things. Whoever fears the standing in front of his Lord, meaning if you are afraid of the day that you will have to speak to Allah naked without any translator between you and you, if you're fearing that day, for that person is two jannas. This is the first meaning. The second meaning, maqam over here means the status of Allah. The, the fact that Allah is so great, so noble, so amazing, so high, so majestic. Fear his status, fear his pride. This is the second meaning. The third meaning of maqam over here is his legislations and his rulings. The fact that Allah has made this halal and that haram. Whoever fears this, jannatan, for him is two jannas. What a jannatan, why two jannas? In the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslims from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari rahimahullah, that he said the Rasulullah sallallahu said, for every single believer will be two jannas. One jannah will be made of gold and another jannah will be totally made of silver. So when you say gold, meaning everything inside is gold. So the houses are made of gold, the clothes are gold, uh, every uh, reclining couch is made of gold, right? And in uh, the other one is made of silver, meaning it's bright, shiny like silver. Even the cups are like silver, the clothes are full of silver, the houses are silver. This is the Jannatan. Which of the powers or the blessings here is more appropriate? Which of the favors of your Lord will you now deny? Dawata Afnan, full of amazing trees, most beautiful, lively trees. These are trees that sing in the wind. And these are trees that are actually moving around. Why? Because as soon as you come in, they're offering the, their fruits to you. Which of the blessings of your Lord will you deny? Inside these beautiful rivers, Jannas, are Ainan, two springs, Tajriyan. They are overflowing, they're flowing continuously. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? And for each person in their jannas is fruits. From each fruit is zawjan, two, uh, two types of fruits. Meaning, some scholars said it is a male and female of it. Other scholars said two colored fruits or two species of the same fruit. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Ibn Abbas said in the tafsir of this verse, there is nothing that is similar between this dunya and jannah except names. Reality is Jannah is very different and mashallah something which the eyes have never seen, ears have never heard and the heart cannot even imagine. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? They will be reclining upon furush, upon couches. So a nice bata'ina, the cushions, min istabarak from silk. Meaning when they're reclining, the trees will come forward and offer the fruits to you. So which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Inside it are qasiratu tarf. Women that are pure, that are qasiratu tarf. Qasara means to lower and, and humble. A tarf meaning your gaze. Lam yatumithunna insun qablahum wala jan. 
no one from the jinn or mankind has ever touched them because they are created in Jannah. These are the beautiful women of paradise. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? They are as beautiful as if they are like uh, uh, Yaqut is rubies or emeralds. While Marjan, Marjan is anything that comes out of the, uh, out of, out of the ocean. So beautiful pearls that come out of the ocean. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Is the reward of goodness except goodness? If you do good in this dunya, you spend this dunya and this life in goodness, giving sadaqah, struggling in the path of Allah, praying, fasting, reading Quran. Can you ever think Allah is going to give you anything except good? Hal jazaul ihsani illa al ihsan? Can the reward of anything good be except good? This is a verse that gives so much hope to any believer that all his struggle in this dunya will be rewarded by Allah. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? And other than these two jannas, another two jannas. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? These two jannas are full of very dark, lushy, green trees. That on top of each other, it is covering the light, it looks dark green. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Inside it are Ainan, two springs, not that are bursting forth with power and gushing forth in beautiful, and these are springs not of water only, but of wine and of milk and of honey and of, uh, of the most amazing, sweet tasting water. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? And inside it is fakiha, is fruits, وَالنَّخْلْ and date palms, وَالرُمَّان and pomegranate. It, it, this is a way in the Arabic language of giving prominence to something. And here Allah is giving excellence to Rumman, this beautiful pomegranate. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Inside it, meaning women of the best, best type. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? They are hur, meaning wide eyed, black eyed, meaning wide eyes, beautiful big eyes, but they are black, meaning they have got lots of heavy mascara around it that are kept inside the tents. The scholars of Islam said from the authentic hadith of Rasulullah, inside Jannah are tents for every believer. And inside these tents, these tents are actually hollowed out pearls. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? No, no jinn nor insan has ever touched them. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Muttaki'een ala rafrafin. Whilst reclining in your khiyam, you will be muttaki'een reclining ala rafraf. Rafraf means carpets. Khudrin that are green, abqariyin hisan of the most softest material. Fabi ayi ala yorabbikuma tu kadiban. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? Tabarakasmu rabbika dil jalali walikram. Glory be to the name of your Lord, the possessor of all majesty and all glory.